Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to DCM Sri Ram Limited's Q3 FY22 Earnings Conference Call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Siddharth Rangnekar from CDR India. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good evening and thank you for joining us on DC and Shiram Limited's Quarter 3 and 9 MFI 22 earnings conference call. Today we have with us Mr. Ajay Shiram, Chairman and Senior Managing Director, Mr. Vikram Shiram, Vice Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Ajit Shiram, Joint Managing Director, Mr. KK Call, Full Time Director, and Mr. Amit Agarwal, CFO of the company. We shall commence with the opening remarks with Mr. Ajay Shiram and Mr. Vikram Shiram, following which we will have an interactive question and answer session. Before we commence, please note that some of the statements made on today's call could be forward-looking in nature, and a note to that effect has been included in the conference call and wide circulated earlier. I would now like to invite Mr. Ajay Shiram to give us a brief overview on the company's performance and his views going forward. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Siddharth. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you for joining us on our Q3 and nine month financial year 22 earnings conference call. I would like to wish all of you a very happy new year. I hope all of you and your families are staying safe and keeping well. I will walk you through the business developments. Thereafter, Vikram will follow with his thoughts on the financial perspectives. We are glad that our businesses reported an overall healthy performance despite the operating challenges during the quarter. The input and output prices of chlorovinyl businesses were at levels never seen before. The volatility was extremely high and unidirectional. Compounding this problem was the supply constraint. Late rains in the rubby season posed challenges to the agri-input businesses. Most of our businesses managed the situation well and delivered growth along with better margins. You are aware that we are investing in further strengthening the businesses through scale, integration, and cost optimization across our chemicals, sugar, and finesta businesses. Other businesses like Shiram Farm Solutions are OPEX intensive and are growing in scale. In this quarter, we have announced additional investment in the sugar business. These steps will help us maintain the growth momentum as well as manage volatility better. I would now like to take you to the business-wise key developments of the company. Chemicals. The operating environment in the business is very dynamic. The prices of caustic soda moved to historical highs during the first two months of the quarter, driven by supply constraints from US and China. The abnormality of high energy prices added to the cost of production and that went up substantially. Global supplies started getting restored from November onward, post the hurricane in the United States and end of the dual control policy in China. The current international prices have come down from a peak of about 500 to 550 US dollars per metric ton. Going forward, there are, pla there are planned shutdowns for some US manufacturing plants and the impact is yet to be seen. Domestically, demand from key consuming sectors remains stable. However, some pressure is witnessed in the textile and paper segment towards the end of the quarter. Domestic chemical so caustic soda prices are moving in line with international prices. Chlorine is under pressure due to increased operating rates of chloralkali manufacturers and lower demand for some consuming sectors. Input costs have seen significant uptick led by coal and salt prices. We are procuring optimally and using all options to mitigate the impact. We are also keeping enough supplies to ensure there is no constraints on this account. The chemicals business is implementing a 120 megawatt captive power plant and we are expanding our caustic soda capacity by 850 tons per day and flaker capacity by 600 tons per day. Additionally, the aluminum chloride capacity is going up by 90 tons per day. We are also setting up a 51,000 tons per annum 
एपिक्लोरोहाइड्रीन कैपेसिटी प्लांट एंड 52,500 टन्स पर एनम हाइड्रोजन परऑक्साइड कैपेसिटी प्लांट ऑल दिस प्रोजेक्ट्स आर अंडरवे दे आर एक्सपेक्टेड टू टू गेट कमीशन विद अ फ्यू मंथ्स डिलेज ड्यू टू द कोविड-19 एंड एरेटिक रेन्स प्रोजेक्ट कॉस्ट्स आर आल्सो एक्सपेक्टेड टू इंक्रीज गिवन द रीकॉन्फिगरेशन ऑफ प्रोजेक्ट्स बेस्ड स्केल एफिशिएंसीज मार्केट डिमांड and increase in commodity prices we are trying to minimize the delays and cost increases however returns on the projects continue to be healthy vinayak the global demand continues to remain strong the prices are still at healthy levels although the import prices have moved lower since making a peak in october 2021 pursuant to easing of supplies from china and the us like in caustic soda the increase in caustic in energy prices have led to significant increase in input costs high energy prices pose a risk if the product prices come down given the nature of the commodities and more so in the current circumstances the operating environment is expected to remain volatile It's sugar the domestic sugar production expectation in the current season a 30.5 million tons the sugar production till 31st december 2021 stood 4.3% higher at about 11.5 metric uh, million metric tons compared to the same period last year in the current season we saw cane crush of our factory saw cane crush of 212 lakh quintals <coughs> versus 203 lakh quintals last year as on 31st december recoveries on final assets basis till 31st december for the season stood at 10.5% for sugar season 22 vis-a-vis 10.7% for sugar season 21 global sugar is expected to be deficit which will keep the international prices firm given that the government has not announced export subsidies india is expected to export about 5 to 6 million metric tons of sugar in the current season which is about 7 million metric tons in the last season currently the net realization on exports is lower than the domestic prices during the quarter we produced ethanol by cane juice route as well as bee heavy molasses sugar diverted to cane juice and bee heavy ethanol till 31st december 2021 stood at 4.3 lakh quintals versus 2.1 lakh quintals in the same period last year we will continue to strive for an optimal mix for our distillery and sugar operations at the sugar business we are setting up 120 kiloliters per day multi feed distillery and increasing our sugar refining capacity from 500 ton crush per day to 26500 tons crush per day and expanding our sugar capacity by 3000 tons per day among others these projects are expected to be commissioned within planned time and cost estimates agri inputs the segment includes shiram farm solutions bioseed and the fertilizer businesses shiram farm solutions showed good growth on the back of higher sales for wheat seed and specialty nutrients during the rabi season during the rabi season sowing got delayed due to untimely monsoons which affected the business to some extent the thrust on value added inputs continues together with focus on research based varieties with a view to deliver consistently good performance bioseed international operations are doing well for bioseed india it is a short season with main season being kharif the business is making efforts to launch new products and scale up we are very hopeful of a better performance over the medium term the fertilizer business the operations are stable however the urea subsidy outstanding is higher than expected levels given the increase in cash in gas prices outstanding stood at 450 crores as on december 31st 2021 versus 624 crores as on december 31st 2020 and rupees 153 crores as on 31st march 2021 canesta canesta delivered a healthy momentum 
on the back of enhanced sales in the retail and project segment. Whereas the impact of the previous waves of the pandemic has abated, there may be some impact from the third wave. Auto booking was up 43% year on year during Q3 financial year 22, with retail segment giving 20% growth in the period and project segment giving 91% growth. We continue to expand capacity, reach, and product range while enhancing service levels in order to maintain a healthy performance outlook. During the quarter, the company acquired the balanced 50% stake for the joint venture partner in the PVC compounding business to make it a 100% subsidiary. We are gearing up to deliver better scale and efficiencies through ongoing capital expenditure. With a stronger proposed footprint in value creating products, stronger integrated capabilities and enhanced capacity, we are seeking a better and stable profitability across our operations. With this, now I will now request Vikram to take us to the financial highlights. Vikram, up to you. Uh, Mr. Vikram, your line is unmuted. You may please go ahead, sir. Babu, your phone is on mute. Oh. Uh, thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. A very happy, safe, and healthy new year to all of you. I will now take you through the financial highlights for the quarter. Net revenues grew 26% year on year to rupees 2,730 crores versus rupees 2,159 crores in Q3 financial year 21. Significant impact on revenues during the quarter were due to chlorovenyl segment was up 90% year on year to rupees 1,042 crores. Chemical businesses revenues were up 115% year on year at rupees 738 crores in Q3 22, driven by prices. ECU prices were up 126% year on year. Vinyl revenues were up 47% year on year at rupees 304 crores, driven primarily by higher prices of products. Cash from carbide prices were up 94% and PVC prices up 36%. Prices continue to be at healthy levels, however, having moved in a wide range. In the sugar business revenues, Net of excise duty on country liquor sales were down 14% at rupees 565 crores as a result of lower sales volumes. Sugar volumes were down 29% as a, as a result of lower monthly releases. Distillery volumes were down, 20, uh, were down 17% due to lower availability of molasses in the month of October 21 and plant maintenance. Higher sugar and distillery prices partially mitigated the impact. In fertilizers, the revenue stood by higher by 39% at rupees 367 crores, consequent to higher gas prices, which were at USD 15.1 per million um, BTU versus USD 8.2 last year, which is a pass through. Current gas prices are over USD 20. The increased gas prices for FY22 have not yet been notified by the government and is the main, increase, main reason for the re increase in subsidy dues from the government. Petnesta revenues were up 26% year on year at Rs. 137 crores during the period. We have seen an improvement as in retail as well as projects verticals. On a sequential basis, revenues were up 5%. In SFS business, revenues were high by 13% year on year at Rs. 446 crores, led by wheat seeds, which were up 16%, and specialty nutrient products, which were up 28%. On profitability, fr profitability front during Q322, PBDIT improved by 46% year on year at Rs. 614 crores. In chemicals, PBDIT came in at Rs. 286 crores, higher by 193%. In 
Vinyl PBDIT was up 24% year on year at Rs 125 crores. The growth was led by higher product prices and volumes. For both chemicals and vinyl businesses, input costs and power and fuel costs came in higher. However, they were more than offset by higher product prices, leading to absolute better margins. Subsequent, sequentially, the PBDIT of vinyl business was lower given the steep increase in input costs and lower volumes of PVC. In sugar business, PBDIT came in higher at 13% year on year at Rs 132 crores, mainly due to higher sugar realizations and higher ethanol prices. Volumes were lower for reasons which were explained a little while ago. In the SFS business, the PBDIT was higher by 24%, led by better volumes and higher provision for old inventory in earlier periods. Overall margins were stable. In the Finesta business, PBDIT is up 16%, led by better prices and volumes. In the BioSeed business, PBDIT came in at negative rupees 32 crores, versus negative rupees 8 crores during the same period last year. The performance was impacted by lower volumes and higher write-off and provisioning of inventory. PAT came in at rupees 350 crores, up 38% year on year. Coming to the nine months financial year 22, net revenues were higher by 12% year on year at rupees 6,832 6, crores. The reasons for growth are largely in line as explained above. It is pertinent to mention here that Lorvenil and Fenesta were, in, were impacted by pandemic and lockdown due, due to COVID-19 during Q1 financial year 21, resulting in loss of production leading to lower sales in the last year. Moving to the PBDIT for nine months, we saw a consolidated growth of 44% at Rs. 1,225 crores, led by strong PBDIT growth in chlorovenyl and penestra segments as a result of higher prices and volumes. PAT came in at Rs. 666 crores, up 51%. Coming to the balance sheet, the company, as on 31st December 21, had surplus cash net of debt of Rs. 245 crores, versus net debt of Rs. 385 crores as on 31st December 2020 and Rs. 180 crores as on 31st March 21. Reduction in net debt is attributed to strong operating cash flows over the last 12 months. Further, there is seasonality in capital employed, which is high during Q4 due to inventory buildup in sugar and urea subsidy outstanding from the government. The ROSI also saw an improvement at 27% versus 17% for December 20 and 23% for September 21. During the quarter, the board declared a second interim dividend at 260% amounting to Rs. 81.1 crores. Total dividend for nine months ending 31st December is 490% amounting to Rs. 152.8 crores versus 275% last year, amounting to Rs. 85.8 crores. <clears throat> Overall, despite the micro challenges, the company has delivered a robust performance. The company continues its healthy financial position with a strong balance sheet. Our growth plans continue to be on track. That brings me to the end of the financial discussion, and we will be happy to take any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question, we press star and one on their natural telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue is open. The first question is from the line of Emma from Unify Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, sir, the first question is the tax rate. 
I believe we had some tax holidays in the past under Section 80 EIA, and this year so far, and specifically in the Q3, the tax rate is on higher side. So, can you please explain the reason and guide on the full year tax rate for current fiscal and the next fiscal? Amit, please. Yeah. So, see, uh, Amit, the, the tax rate is higher at about 32 percent, and I think for full year it should be around that level. And okay. two key reasons why it has gone up. One, the overall profitability has gone up, and uh, the tax benefits, as you rightly mentioned, on ETIA, they have come down also because the input prices have gone up. So if the coal prices go up, the benefit on account of transfer price goes down. So that's another reason why the ETIA benefit is lower this year. Next year, we'll have to see how the prices of uh, coal pan out. And that's how we will be, we'll be able to decide the tax rate. But it should be still in the range of around uh, 30% plus next year as well. Okay. So are we planning to move to 25% tax regime anytime soon? See, we will see basis are, you know, how the cash flow is because we still have mad credit uh, of a higher degree of close to a little over 250 crores. So that also we'll have to see. So probably not immediately, definitely not in next year probably the year after that, or maybe one, two years down the line. Okay, okay, fine, fine, makes sense, thank you. And there's a second question in the biocid business, and we had this discussion even in the last quarter call. Uh, the business has not grown in for the last few years, and there is hardly any profitability, and even the decent chunk of our capital is stuck in the business. So can you please explain strategically how does this business fit in the long-term plans of the company? I'm not asking from a perspective of a next rubbish season or next career season from say three to five years perspective. That is first question on the bio season. The second part is this year, uh, this quarter, we had about 30, 35 crore loss uh, in this business. Historically, we had about 10, 12 crore loss in Q3. So the losses were also on the hash side. So can you please explain the same? AK, would you like to answer that? Yeah. But it's true that uh, the performance has been under pressure for the last two years. And uh, uh, it's not only us, most of the seed companies have suffered in the last two years because of several reasons. But uh, I'll not go into that. As, uh, uh, but what I can tell you that ours is a research-based seed company. We have a very comprehensive research program across many crops, including cop cotton, uh, corn, paddy, mustard, and vegetables also. Our product pipelines are healthy, and some of our newer products which we have introduced this year, you know, there the performance has been far, far more better than, and we have almost doubled the, the sales in those products. So, and we have a following uh, pipeline also very strong. So uh, we also have uh, taken several measures in terms of, uh, you know, improving our processes in terms of uh, adding on to the capability enhancement, churning our portfolio. We're also looking at export markets. So we're quite hopeful and confident in the coming years we should see the business turn around. And as I said, uh, with favorable uh, regulatory policies and favorable monsoon conditions, I think we, we are quite confident that we'll be able to turn that around in the next coming years. Okay. And this quarter, what was the reason uh, for the higher losses? Some provision in inventory there, or there are several i mean you would know that industry the seed industry across has not done well this year several reasons you know if you look at the cotton the acreages have gone down and then there are large okay. large proportion of illegal seeds which were sold in the market and then there were erratic rain so this is uh, similar similarly the government subsidy programs because of the corona second wave the government didn't spend on uh, seed subsidy programs, which they used to do every year. So the common purchasing went down. And they were, for us particularly, there were some restrictions imposed directly or indirectly on paddy growing, in, particularly in some southern states where we have a very strong presence. So that has affected our performance more than the other seed companies. But overall, the other seed companies also haven't done well. Both two, such two successive years, both two years in FY21 and FY22. Also, the COVID effect has been more on uh, the seed industry than the previous year. And we also have rationalized and done some churning on our inventories 
and taken some falls on slow moving inventory in terms of creating some provisions. So overall, that's the reason for a relatively poor performance that you see this year. Okay, okay, makes sense. Uh, sir, last question from my side. Uh, sir, it, we are seeing that cost and PVC prices are cooling off, and it is very obvious uh, from such unsustainable levels. But how do you see? I, I know it's uh, very hard to guess for anyone how the prices will move. But how do you see the demand supply situation evolving in the next year or so? Uh, will the prices continue to normalize or will remain at elevated levels, considering that coal has also started to move up again? So, how do you see the uh, the commodity prices? Okay, you would like to take that? <coughs> yes, uh, you know, uh, the prices have been all time high. We have seen in Q3, particularly if you look at both the caustic uh, chlorine prices as well as the PVC prices, they have been at their highest ever. Uh, you know, PVC prices touched uh, close to $1,900 in October, but this, this, they have already corrected to a large extent. Uh, we do expect that the prices will still continue to be healthy, but not in the range that we have seen in Q3. Maybe they'll be more like Q1 and Q2 kind of prices on an average. The demand is still strong. I think uh, we don't see any uh, problem in the demand. The demand both for PVC and caustic soda is expected to remain strong. Did I answer your question? Ah, yes, yes. And just a small uh, thing on the sugar export volume. Do we expect the export volume to be same as last year Q4 in sugar exports? This next Q4? See, uh, as far as uh, sugar exports are concerned, as was mentioned in the opening remarks, <clears throat> the exports last year was uh, roughly 7 million tons. And this year, so, uh, so far, 4 million tons have been contracted. And two, uh, 2 million has already been exported. We do expect uh, export level of roughly five to five and a half million tons to happen this year, essentially from uh, Karnataka and Maharashtra, because there is no government subsidy this year uh, on the sugar exports. Okay, 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 makes sense, makes sense. And sir, is there any huge delay in the downstream projects? You mentioned in press release and presentation that there is some delay because of COVID and a lot of uh, supply chain disruptions. So uh, the downstream projects will come on in H2 FI 23, right? Amir, you want to take that? Yes. Sorry, as mentioned in the in our in, in CMB's message as well that uh, we are expecting delays given by given the, the COVID-19 waves and erratic rains. So yes, there will be a delay, but that delay should be not more than a quarter. And we're trying to see how best we can curtail the delay. Okay. That, 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 that answered my question. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pratik Shah from its latest investment in COVID. Good evening, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. So my first question is uh, on caustic. So, uh, in the presentation mentioned that the exports have gone up at industry level. Are we seeing similar uh, trend for uh, DC and Sriram? And how do we see this trajectory going ahead? Do we think that export will uh, be a higher contributor, relatively speaking? Uh, yes. If we see the performance last year and for the coming year, uh, the fortunate part, as I mentioned earlier, also was the international prices are fairly satisfactory. So because of that, we do expect exports to go up. Our exports also almost doubled. We did, I think, if I recollect, 20, 22,000 tons earlier. This time we did about 44,000 tons, 45,000 tons. So it is going up, and we expect it to go up a little more in the coming year. Okay, and does like uh, do we have any uh, you know margins are better in export or domestic or vice versa? How does it work? You know these are commodities, so the prices of commodities vary. You know, so I think it's a matter of really trying a balance between supply and demand. So that's our objective. We undertake exports whenever we can, depending on supply and demand situation in the country also. Right. And in your opening remarks, you mentioned that uh, some of the supply constraints uh, in October are back and you expect certain uh, plant shutdowns in USA. If you could just elaborate about how do you look at uh, supply constraints for the next two quarters 
in overseas market? I think overseas is difficult to say because of climatic conditions, the changes happen so rapidly. But I think uh, our expectation is that, yes, the international prices have subdued compared to the peaks they reached. And the peaks they reached also were unusual. I mean, we have to be honest with that. Uh, that's uh, not, not tenable. But okay. it's come down to a more decent level, and we expect it to stay around this level for some, uh, some more time. Okay. And how about power costs, sir? Do we think that that also has peaked out, or uh, we, might, we continue to see certain uh, input pressure ahead also? See, the power cost, if you know, the, the coal cost a couple of months back have peaked a lot. But okay. it's come down. But it's picked up again a little bit because Indonesia banned the export of coal uh, two months back. Right. So, industry has taken it up in Indonesia also, from India also. So, it's gone up a little bit. But uh, I think the input cost will be a little challenging coming going ahead. You know, because freight is also a serious matter. I think you all are aware that the international freight has also gone up substantially. So right. all these things are impacting the input cost. So, uh, so Indonesia coal ban, what I understand is it's probably going to like it's going to be a continuing feature for some time. So then the prices we can expect to remain high. I mean, while the realizations have uh, you know moderated, the input cost will continue to remain high. Is that understanding correct? Well, I think the input cost because there's coal available in South Africa also and other countries also. So it's not only Indonesia. And Australian coal is also coming in. A lot of that is going to China, which was going earlier from Indonesia also. <clears throat> so coal is moving around. And our expectation is, from what we discussed and understand, that Indonesia might change their policy going forward. Because uh, 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 all the coal in Indonesia is not being picked up by the domestic users. So uh, if they change their policy, it will definitely ease the situation. But, you know, commodity prices are so volatile. No one can make any commitment. Understandable. And, uh, uh, sir, on sugar, if we could just uh, highlight what would be the mix of our ethanol from juice uh, versus B heavy versus C heavy, and what would be our optimum target mix that we would uh, have, like? Ajit? Amit, do you have to break up? See, in this... Uh, a quarter we have produced uh, uh, ethanol from uh, cane, from cane juice directly of, of, of about uh, 107 110 lakh liters and from b heavy we have produced uh, in this quarter close to about uh, uh, 73 74 uh, lakh liters so that's the broad breakup in terms of our ethanol Okay. And if you could just explain why would we, like, uh, what, what kind of dependence we have on outside molasses and, uh, like, I would, would like to assume that we would be self-sufficient. So why would this such a situation be created? Ajit? See, essentially we are short of molasses by roughly 12 to 13 lakh quintals. And that's, uh, that's one of the reasons also we are putting up this multi-seed uh, 120k distillery and uh, using of cane juice also enhances the, co the, the output of uh, the ethanol. So a combination of the, of the multi-feed distillery, uh, use of cane juice, use of more bee heavy and, and at the end of the day the effort is to increase the level of crush in, in terms of lac quintals. So our, our cane division is actively working with the farmers to increase the, the level of cane that we crush so that we're able to have uh, uh, adequate feed for the ethanol manufacturing. Okay. Uh, all right. And uh, uh, last question on Fenesta front. So we've seen some small, uh, slight margin uh, contraction here. So is this more of a strategic uh, call that we would want to increase our scale and uh, we will be okay to compromise margins to a certain extent here? Who will take that? Yeah, um, yeah, actually there have been severe cost pressures in Penesta also because of PVC, steel, everything, rupee depreciation, etc. So it's uh, more to do with cost pressures. And it's okay. very marginal. And okay, but would we be able to pass this on? 
Sadri, could you repeat yourself? Would we be able to pass on these input pass pressures, uh, uh, you know, to in our realization, like without impacting our volumes, or this? It is. The plan is, and the working is in that direction. And uh, so far, the new bookings are at a higher price point. But between booking and delivery, there's anywhere between three months to nine months time lag, or one to two months to nine months. So one can't really forecast the long term. But yes, prices are being increased every month or every two months to take care of the cost pressures. All right. And uh, last uh, thing, if you could elaborate a little bit about the aluminium offerings that we are working on, and uh, uh, like how do they compare to our existing, uh, in terms of margins, existing products? So the aluminium. The margins are aluminium, okay, aluminium systems. Aluminium systems are system Aluminium we introduced. Yeah. 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 System aluminium was introduced, I think, about a year, year and a half ago. And uh, the margins as a percentage may be lower, but the absolute amount is higher. The product is taking uh, is a, uh, uh, taking traction. In fact, we are expanding our manufacturing, uh, fabrication and manufacturing capacities because it has gone faster than we expected. And we have introduced a new series uh, called Professional Series, which is at a lower price point. So it is taking uh, a good traction, and we expect it to pick up in the time to come. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nival Jamodia from Anvil Research. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. So my question is uh, predominantly on the chemical side. So if you can uh, could break down the revenues as well as the PBIT between uh, uh, the caustic business as well as our revenue and the PBIT from the value-added products like hydrogen, aluminum, chloride. Amit, let's see what do we say. Yeah, see, uh, pr primarily the revenue will be from, uh, from uh, caustic soda itself, caustic okay. soda and flakes. So from other products, uh, it ranges between 15 to 20 percent in terms of the uh, top line. Now okay. bottom line always will keep changing depending on how much we are making on caustic. So for example, in the last, I mean, last couple of quarters, we've seen that the other products have contributed around 30 percent. This year, because we have uh, earned more on caustic, caustic, so it's about 10, 12 percent, the other products contribution. Okay. And, so, and hydrogen uh, is a major part of that. So Correct. Yeah, yeah. So you mentioned last quarter also the same remarks. Yeah. yeah. And sir, second question is on uh, the input cost. Like you mentioned that uh, our power cost has gone up because of the increase in the coal cost and even salt cost has gone up. If you, if you can quantify in terms of in between the quarters, how, may, how much is the quantum increase for both of these raw materials? Uh, as a practice, uh, I, I'm sorry, we generally don't share our costs, right? Yeah. But yes, there has been a significant increase. Is uh, so that's uh, that's there. Correct. Or or else, if you can uh, uh, say in terms of, let's say, if last quarter was on a scale of hundred, uh, this quarter how much it has gone up? Some some sort of. Yeah, so it would have gone up ballpark. I don't have the number right away, but in excess of fifty percent is what would be the cost increase. Okay. Thank you, sir. And uh, if I have further questions, I'll join back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pratik Tolia from Systematic Shares. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity and congrats on good share of someone. Uh, so just a couple of questions for you again on your cost front. Uh, I think in the last call, we had also mentioned that we were looking at various other uh, you know, inputs uh, apart from coal. I think you were looking at something like Lignite and all. So I think uh, we were still working on those ones. So if you can just share what is happening on that, and as we started using, and what percentage of our, uh, you know, uh, 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 this raw material now uh, is uh, our feed stock is from uh, coming from non coal. Amit. Yeah. So uh, Pratik, uh, both at Baruch and uh, Kota, it ranges between uh, 10 to 15 percent as the total mix of uh, other than coal. So whether it's ignite or biomass, depending on availability, that's the kind of mix. 
sure. And so, so in terms of cost wise, it, uh, it gets limited because the boiler, there is a limitation of each boiler as to how much it can intake. Right, so it's both a mix of availability as well as the type of boiler. And so the cost and how much uh, uh, are we able to save? So I don't have the number right away, but definitely both these the are percentage. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. But uh, then it would bring down our total cost by say uh, eight ten percent. I don't think that kind of an impact with the ten percent because see, the ignite cost also had gone up. Significantly, because coal costs went up, so even ignite went up. Sure. Right. Okay. And so, secondly, uh, uh, on this topic from Sanjay on the capex front, uh, I think in the opening remarks it was mentioned that Coffee Korea we are expanding to 750 and Laker to 600. But is that number? Was the other number correct? Because uh, last call we had uh, talked about 700 TPD of Caustic and 500 TPD of Laker. Right. So, I think there has been some reconfiguration, right? Okay. Uh, given the market demand and certain other economies that we thought. So, we have sure. uh, increased it from 700 to 850 and Flaker from 500 to 600. Sure. So, so what is the increase in our uh, investments then? See, because last time you were mentioning around 700 crores. Yeah, so see, it is a holistic pool that we'll have to work at because there are cost increases which are happening because of this scale element and there are cost increases which are happening also because of uh, the uh, price increase, the metal price increases especially, right? Sure. So we are just working it out. How do we rebalance the whole portfolio so that mm -hmm. the return on the project is continue to be healthy? So we are just reworking that. Okay. So last time I think you had mentioned by Q4 FY23 these plans should be operational. But now with this uh, additional uh, capex that we are doing, so the timelines will get stretched. The additional capex uh, I don't think will impact the timeline. As we mentioned, it is more to do with the delays on account of COVID, as well as the uh, extensive rains that happened in that region, uh, which have caused the delay. So last time what we had mentioned was that despite COVID, we should be able to cover up. But with the rains and with third wave also slightly impacting, we are finding it difficult to cover up the loss that was time loss that was there because of COVID, COVID second wave. So yeah, that's why about a quarter delay is what we're expecting. But we're still working on seeing how to cover it up to maximum extent. Understood. And the last thing uh, on the sugar capex also in the PPT you mentioned uh, that there are just additional capex uh, that you're undertaking in sugar. If you could just highlight. What are these and what is the uh, you know amount that you're spending on each of them? Yeah, so on uh, so there's this 120 KLD multi feed distillery where right. we are spending around uh, around 145 crores. Right. Then there is uh, and then there's a mix of capexes which is uh, like uh, expanding uh, sugar at Ajbapur by 3000 TCD. Then we are converting our refinery, uh, converting our sugar. Uh, operations to refine sugar from for current, you know, currently we can do up to 5,000 TCD. We are going up to 26,500 TCD for refining operations. And uh, what we are also doing is that uh, in terms of uh, uh, um, grain based, you know, the, the miller that you have for the grain, grain mm -hmm. enhancement, that we have for 120 KLD distillery, but we are enhancing it to 260 KLD. Though the distillery size remains at 140, 120. But that we're increasing to, to, uh, to 260 KLD. All that which will cost us another, uh, if I remember correctly, another 350 or 358. Yeah. Right. 358, yeah. That will cost us. And the reason why we are doing this uh, 120 to 260 is again what was just discussed a while back that there are shortage of uh, sea molasses or the molasses uh, in the off season. So we are trying mm -hmm. to see that how do we, you know, ensure that our, our distilleries don't remain idle for about a month or and we are able to source the molasses from in-house uh, feedstock. Sure, sure. So all of this is happening only at Ajwapur, right? See, the, uh, most of it is in Ajwapur, you are right, but refining operations uh, partly, partly in Haryama as well. So Haryama already has a refinery, but that, will, that capacity also will go up. Okay, understood. But majority of it is in Ajivapur, you are right. Sure. 
so that's it from my side. Uh, thank you, and wish you all the very best. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Thank Wendy. you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chintan Chera from Quest Investment. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Thanks for the opportunity. Hi. hi. Uh, so my question is related to the Caustic Soda business. So, firstly, can you please give some insights on the current demand supply situation of the caustic soda industry in India, right? And secondly, uh, there was one anti-dumping being recommended in December 21 from four countries. So, what are the chances of that getting implemented and the impact of the same uh, on the industry and our business? Uh, the caustic soda demand actually is moving and that's what is growing at about six seven percent a year. And that's moved quite stable. We expect it to grow now also at about the same level. So that's going to be a consistent growth, which is moving well. And uh, uh, regarding this additional uh, duty, anti-dumping duty, in fact, the fertilizer, the uh, chemical ministry has recommended it to the finance ministry. So it is in the finance ministry right now, and we are waiting for them to approve this. We sincerely hope it does happen, but no one can say. But the All India Distillers, the all, uh, all, uh, the Alkali Manufacturers Association, they are working on this and uh, in conversation with the government on this matter. Okay, answer on the supply side. So, how is the industry point right now? So, are we seeing some imports or how is that going? You know, fortunately, I would say that you know, a lot of aluminium people and others used to import a lot in the past. But I think the industry also felt that now it's better. Why don't we supply them? Especially when international prices are also better. So I think a lot of manufacturers have got in touch and have a contract going with the aluminium users directly. So we are supplying also. They are also supplying. They're going by rake. So there's a lot of material going. So good thing is imports have come down. But exports have also gone up, which is also a positive sign because of the pricing. So it's moving on both ways, but imports have come down. Okay, so so would that mean that in such a situation there would be some tightness in this industry for say calendar year 22? Pardon me. Uh, there would be some supply tightness for the industry for the calendar year 22. I don't is think there? so. I don't think so because the capacity in the country is quite okay, and uh, people are running at a good rate of uh, production. And uh, I think in next four or five months, if I'm not mistaken, there's an expansion coming up by Grasim and six months later by someone else. So I think all these commodities, if you see over the last 10 years, uh, the, the, you know, the capacity expansion keeps happening somewhere or the other. So I don't see any tightness really happening uh, uh, too much across the board. They could be marginal for a short period of time because of some, some dislocation and movement or something. But there's adequate availability in the country. Okay, okay. Uh, and the secondly, uh, the chlorine that we generate as a byproduct in caustic soda, okay. So how much of that we use captively and how much is sold uh, to the outside market? Oh, I don't, uh, Amit, do you remember how much is used captive? See, yeah. So at Kota plant, where we have a capacity close to 500 TCD of caustic, there almost 40% has a captive sink with our PVC business. Right, and at Baruch, where uh, we have a capacity of uh, 1350 tons per day, there we have an aluminum chloride plant which is being expanded, so that has a chlorine sink of about 4%. We are adding a downstream there, which will further add about 15% uh, of chlorine sink. Also, we are supplying almost 35% uh, to pipelines to uh, the chemicals companies close by. So there is significant sink that we have. Okay, but then this would be not more than 50% for us, right? Combining both the capacities? Combining both, yeah, it will be around, including pipeline, it should be around 50-55%, yes. The rest is sold in the market for HCL and things like that and to other, other uh, manufacturers, internals. Okay, okay. And, and post this uh, entire, uh, the CAPEX project that they have undertaken, this will remain in a similar range or this will go up higher? It should remain in a similar range. And uh, see, our CAPEX is still about uh, a little over a year away. And we are seeing a lot of growth happening in the chemical industry. 
So we do expect this uh, to catch up. Okay, okay. And and how's been the market for chlorine recently? So is there been any change or it's still the same? Like, like it's difficult to uh, sell or dispose of chlorine. See, chlorine market for most part of the year has been good. Off late, yes, we have seen some softening in demand for various factors. But some of the consuming industries, their uh, output levels have come down. Uh, so chlorine, see, always has been a bit of a challenge, but it has been, as I said, good for last one, one and a half years. Off late, yes, there is some reduction in demand because of some consuming sectors. But that should come back, is what we expect. But then we, as we said, we ourselves will are working on downstream utilization of chlorine, so that should help. Okay, okay. And so lastly, uh, in your opening remarks, you mentioned that in in, your, in our PVC business, there's been some uh, supply which has started coming off from China and US. So, so how has been that impacting our business? No, I don't think we can. KK, would like to answer yep. that? Yeah. Yeah. There's very little which is coming from China at this point of time, not more than 6,000 to 8,000 tons. And practically nothing from U.S. at this point of time. But in future, yes, if it comes, it can have an impact. But China prices also continue to be high. So today, globally, the prices are similar. There might be difference between different regions, but all are, uh, all, everywhere the prices are quite high. So we don't see that you know, making any impact. Okay, so you don't foresee any major risk from uh, imports into India, right? The, the imports are, you know, we still are largely, you know, our entire consumption, almost 40% is met by the domestic producers, 60% it still comes from imports. And that yeah. sets the price of the domestic producers also. It's always the domestic production which gets sold first. So the okay. imports, obviously, you know, there is a delay in the time between the book and when it comes. So we don't see that as a threat. Okay, okay, great. If that the current really helpful. Uh, yeah. duties continues, the duties are also important. Okay, okay, that was really helpful, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rohit Nagaraj from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity and uh, congrats on good set of numbers. Uh, so the first question is on caustic front. So in your opening remarks, you indicated that uh, the demand has been uh, you know, impacted from paper and textiles in the month of December. Uh, how are we currently looking at uh, after, say, three weeks of uh, January in terms of overall demand, particularly from these two sectors and generally across the board, given that uh, the pricing environment is still at an elevated level? Thank you. I mean, as I mentioned earlier, that, you know, the, the growth in India is moving at 6 7% a year. And we expect that to carry on. A little ups and downs happen due to aberrations in each industry. Thank you, Singh. I don't know exactly what is the figure of reduction in uh, paper and all. But 6-7% growth is likely to happen in the coming year also, which is going to keep the industry at a fairly even keel. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. And uh, sir, this similar question I think earlier was also asked in terms of the uh, input cost and uh, particularly coal power cost. So uh, we have seen again uh, a similar situation as it was in Q2, in Q3. So in current quarter, uh, has the power cost as well as the logistic cost uh, alleviated to some extent or is it going in the similar direction as it was uh, in Q3? Thank you. Amit? Yeah. So see, as I mentioned uh, in the previous uh, question, that uh, if I see YOY, the costs have gone up uh, uh, in excess of 50% on the overall variable cost trend, largely led by energy prices. Sequentially, they would have gone up in the range of 15 to 20%, 20% ballpark. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, sorry, I was asking from Q3 to uh, Q4, that is current, you know, uh, three weeks of January, uh, are we seeing a similar trend what it was in Q3 or there has been some softening which is uh, experienced? There has been, so there has been a marginal softening, but uh, you've seen again coal prices going up, uh, but they are at least uh, not as high as what we saw in November. So it's uh, difficult to say we are still in uh, January, 
So how it will pan out during the quarter, it will be difficult to say. Sure, sure. Uh, that's very helpful. Fair enough, fair enough. That's very helpful. Thank you and best of luck, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference back to the management for closing comments. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your participation in our Q3 and nine-month financial year ending 22 earnings conference call. We will continue to work on our strategic direction of growing our businesses using scale, multiple revenue streams, enhancing efficiencies, and achieving, and, and achieving higher integration. We will continue to make more strategic investments that augur well for the medium to long-term growth of the company while maintaining a healthy balance sheet. Once again, I'd like to thank you for taking time out and joining us today. Please take care of yourselves and your family and follow all the precautionary advisory of the government, including proper vaccination. Once again, wish you and your family good health and be safe and well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. On behalf of TCM Sriram Limited, we conclude today's conference. Thank you all for joining. You may now disconnect your lines.